great day to be outside. My girls want to go outside and inside and inside and outside. And so, today, we're actually going to read from Exodus chapter 16 and 17. And it's called Man and Quell, which is kind of like uh, meat and bread from God's style. Later on, speaking of bread, I'm going to show you how to make unleavened bread. We noticed that God made a big deal about them having unleavened bread and no yeast, especially when they were doing the Passover feast, and they weren't even to have yeast in their house. So um, I thought, just for variety, I'm making a nice supper after I shower and change, and I'll make unleavened bread, and I'll give you the recipe. I'll post it. Okay, here we go, chapter 16. Then they left Elam and journeyed into the Sin Desert between Elam and Mount Sinai. They arrived there a month after leaving Egypt. Oh, Sin Desert. Hmm, I'm not sure I'd want to be there. there. There, too, the whole community of Israel spoke bitterly against Moses and Aaron. Oh, what we were back. Oh, wish we were back in Egypt, they moaned. It would have been better if the Lord had killed us there. At least there would have been plenty to eat. But now you have brought us into the desert to starve to death. Then the Lord said to Moses, Look, I'm going to rain down food from heaven for you. People can go out each day and pick up much food as they need for that day. I will test them in this to see whether they will follow my instructions. Then tell them to pick up twice as much as usual on the sixth day of each week. When Moses and Aaron called a meeting of all the people of Israel and told them, in the evening you will realize that it was the Lord who brought you out of the land of Egypt. In the morning you will see the glorious presence of the Lord. He has heard your complaining, which is against the Lord and not against us. The Lord will give you meat to eat in the evening and bread in the morning, for he has heard all of your complaining against him. Yes, your complaints are against the Lord, not against us. Then Moses said to Aaron, Say this to the entire community of Israel. Come into the Lord's presence and hear his reply to your complaints. And as Aaron spoke to the people, they looked out towards the desert. In the guiding cloud, they could see the awesome glory of the Lord. They could see the glory of the Lord in that cloud. That's a really amazing thought. And the Lord said to Moses, I have heard the people complaining. Now tell them, in the evening you will have meat to eat, and in the morning you will be filled with bread. Then you will know that I am the Lord your God. The evening, what, um, that evening vast numbers of quail arrived and covered the camp. The next morning the desert all around the camp was wet with dew. And when the dew disappeared later in the morning, then flakes white like frost covered the ground. The Israelites were puzzled when they saw it. What is this? they asked, and Moses told them. It is food the Lord has given you. The Lord says that each household should gather as much as needed. Pick up two quarts for each person. So the people of Israel went out and gathered this food, some getting more and some getting less. By gathering two quarts for each person, everyone had just enough. Those who gathered a lot had nothing left over, and those who gathered only a little had nothing left. I had enough, pardon me. Each family had just what it needed. I'm reading out of a smaller print Bible because Eric has mine in the big one in the car. We took it to church the other day. And it's, this one is the uh, Living, Living Faith Bible. <laughs> so it's a little different than what we usually read. So I'm stumbling along a little bit here. Okay. Then Moses told them, do not keep any of it overnight. But of course, some of them did, and they didn't listen, and kept some of it until morning. By then, it was full of maggots. It had a terrible smell, and Moses was very angry with them. The people gathered the food morning, and morning by morning, each family according to his need. As the sun became hot, the food they had picked up melted and disappeared. On the sixth day, there was twice as much as usual on the ground. Four quarts for each person instead of two. The leaders of the people came and asked Moses why this had happened. He replied, The Lord has appointed tomorrow a day of rest, a holy Sabbath to the Lord. On this day, 
we will rest from our normal daily tasks. So bake a, or boil as much as you want today and set it aside and set aside what's left for tomorrow. The next morning, the leftover food was whole, uh, wholesome and good, without maggots or odor. Moses said, This is your food for today, for today is Sabbath to the Lord. There will be no food on the ground today. Gather food for six days, but on the seventh day is a Sabbath. There will be no food on the ground for you on that day. Some of the people went out anyway to gather food, even though it was the Sabbath day, but there was none to be found. How long will these people refuse to obey my commandments and instructions, the Lord asked Moses. Do they not realize that I've given them the seventh day, the Sabbath, as a day of rest? That is why I gave you twice as much food on the sixth day, so there will be enough for two days. On the Sabbath day you must stay in your place. Do not pick up food from the ground on that day. So the people rested on the seventh day. In time, the food became known as manna. It was white, like a coriander seed, and it tasted like honey cakes. Hmm, sounds good. Then Moses gave them this commandment from the Lord. Take two quarts of manna and keep it as a forever, as a treasure memorial of the Lord's provision. By doing this, later generations will be able to see the bread that the Lord provided in the wilderness when he brought you out of Egypt. Moses said to Aaron, Get a container and put two quarts of manna into it, then store it in a sacred place as a reminder for all future generations. Aaron did this, just as the Lord had commanded Moses. Then he eventually placed it for keeping in the Ark of the Covenant. So the people of Israel ate manna for forty years, until they arrived in the land of Canaan, where there were crops to eat. The container used to measure the manna was an omer, which held about two quarts. There you go. Now we know what an omer is. Chapter 17 of Exodus. At the Lord's command, the people of Israel left the sin, left the sin desert and moved from place to place. Eventually they came to Rephidim. But there was no water to be found there. So once more the people grumbled and complained to Moses, Give us water to drink, they demanded. Quiet, Moses replied. Why are you arguing with me and why are you testing the Lord? But tomorrow, but, um, but tormented by thirst, they continued to complain. Why did you ever take us out of Egypt? Why did you bring us here? We, our children, and our livestock will all die. Then Moses pleaded with the Lord, What should I do with these people? They are about to stone me. The Lord said to Moses, Take your shepherd's staff, the one you used when you struck the water of the Nile. Then call some of the leaders of Israel and walk on ahead of the people. I will meet you by the rock of Mount Sinai. Strike the rock and water will come pouring out. Then the people will be able to drink. Moses ju did just as what was told him. And the Israelites looked on when water gushed out. Moses named this place Massa, the place of testing, and Meribah, the place of arguing, because the people of Israel argued with Moses and tested the Lord by saying, Is the Lord going to take care of us or not? Uh, verse number 8 is called Israel defeats the Amalekites. While the people of Israel were still in wrath, Adam, the warriors of Amalek came to fight against them, and Moses commanded Joshua, Call the Israel army and fight the army of Amalek tomorrow, and I will set stand at the top of the hill with the staff of God in my hand. She says Amalek, and then they call them Amalek, or Amalekites. And I guess it must mean people or children or something like um, Israel's children were called Israelites, <laughs> and uh, there's all kinds of ites that Eric's been reading about, so these are the Amalekites. So Joshua did, what, and this is verse 10, so Joshua did what Moses had commanded. He led his men out to fight the army of Amalek. Meanwhile, Moses, Aaron, and Hur went to the top of the nearby hill, and as long as Moses held up the staff in his hands, the Israelites